Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Apubo Rama, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about The Sparrow. As in the latest update for Grand Theft Auto Online, this helicopter was buffed rather substantially, I should mention. The Presser Mark II has been a staple of GTA for a while. It's a flying broomstick with missiles, it's got flares, it's kind of got it all, even a rocket boost. But it does have some downsides. First of all, it does not feature unlimited homing missiles. Once you run out of them, you gotta go down to the ground, respawn your presser back in, which can be a little bit of a pain. The presser is limited at 130 miles per hour, which is quick, but not nearly as quick as something like the Sparrow or F-160 ride you. And one of its biggest limiting factors is the price tag. Making your way over to Warstock, you are going to find the Oppressor Mark II. Actually, it's easier to find if we just go to the top and sort by price, because it's six million dollars. And that's with the trade price. You also need to own a terabyte to upgrade the Oppressor Mark II, and you need to own a nightclub to own a terabyte. So, to fully upgrade an Oppressor Mark II, you're looking at around ten plus million dollars. That is absolutely insane. And in the latest update of GTA, Rockstar has buffed the Sparrow, which is just giving me more reasons to say, don't buy the Oppressor Mark II and get your hands on a Sparrow. So let's actually talk about what's changed. A quick thank you to my sponsor, U4GM. If you guys are looking for discounted shark cards and millions of dollars, make sure to check the link in the pinned comment down below. I think my favorite thing about the Sparrow is just calling it in. It is so easy to go to Service Vehicles Kosatka and select your Sparrow. And what's great is that it doesn't count as a personal vehicle. What that means is that you can still have an Oppressor Mark II or any other car out while you are flying around the Sparrow, just making life so much easier. Plus, when it gets destroyed, it automatically gets sent back to your Kosatka two minutes later, unlike a personal vehicle that you're going to have to go call Moore's Mutual Insurance and get it back. So let's talk about the armor buff, which is really the only thing that was changed on the Sparrow, but oh boy, is it a big armor buff. First of all, we have landing. As many of us know, landing a Sparrow at high speeds is one of the most annoying things to do in the game, because it constantly starts to smoke. Well, I'm landing it at full speed here, and look at that. Not a single spot of smoke coming out of our Sparrow. That is huge! It means even if you land the Sparrow as hard as you humanly can, it really doesn't matter. It's not gonna smoke. Let's do it one more time. Let's see if it starts smoking. Nope, still. Two smashes into the ground, and our Sparrow is still not smoking. I mean, that's crazy! Previously, the Sparrow would have been smoking immediately. Essentially, what Rockstar did is they about tripled the armor of the Sparrow. Now, it's not enough to survive any explosions. So, if you are thinking, oh, my Sparrow is going to be able to survive a homing rocket, that's not the case. A single railgun shot, a single homing launcher rocket, or RPG is going to blow this thing to smithereens. But the fact that they still increased its armor so that after two smashes into the ground, we are not smoking. I mean, that took three hits. That's absolutely insane. I should also mention that it can survive an additional two explosive rounds from an explosive sniper, going from three to five, making the survivability of this helicopter just a lot better if you're trying to get away from harm. Because you already have flares, so the chance of hitting this helicopter with any type of homing rocket is quite slim to none. And yeah, let's be honest, if you're hitting this helicopter with an RPG, you're a pretty skilled shot, and I think you deserve to take it down to begin with. So, in general, you're not going to have to worry too much about being taken out of the sky in the Sparrow. And as I said, it just survives so much more in terms of damage, and it gets even better. Calling out a new Sparrow. We're going to crash this into a building, and we're going to crash it into this building pretty fast as we are flying close to our top speed. But look at that. Our Sparrow did not blow up crashing into a building at like 130 miles an hour. That's insane. Previously, the Sparrow would have been in 8 million pieces scattered across the wall of that building, but now, no problem. Smash it right in the wall of a building and you're still alive. I mean, yeah, it's pretty rare that you're going to just smash a Sparrow into any object, but I can tell you for a fact that there have been a couple of times every now and then when I'm flying a little low and I do end up clipping the edge of a building or a light post, a street pole, something like that. 
And just the fact that the Sparrow can literally survive that now is so insane. So sure, might not be able to survive any explosions, but this is arguably just as important, if not even better. The chance of somebody taking out my Sparrow, as I said, with homing rockets is literally almost none. But the chance of me accidentally crashing my Sparrow or landing it too hard and it starting to smoke, now that was something that was actually a rather annoying problem. One other change that was also really, really huge was the amount of machine gun fire the Sparrow can take before being blown up. Previously, the Sparrow could survive around 30 seconds of machine gun fire if somebody was inside of it before being annihilated. But now it is double at 60 seconds of machine gun fire. This is absolutely insane. And it just makes using the Sparrow in general so much more fun when doing missions. Because we can see I'm just sitting in front of these bullets and I actually might die just because of the fact I'm getting nuked. But the Sparrow, completely fine. And we can just chill back here and launch missiles anyway. The Oppressor Mark II has the exact same missiles as the Sparrow. But obviously, the Oppressor is limited by how many missiles it carries where the Sparrow does not have that problem at all. I've already managed to clear three gang captains, and I just gotta find the last one. I don't even know where this dude is. Oh, maybe that's him right in there. Nope, unfortunate. There you go, that was pretty easy. So, doing a specialist security contract for my agency took me, what, two minutes there? Not even, and I made $51,000. The Oppressor Mark II would have completed that in the same amount of time, maybe even less, because I probably wouldn't have been able to use my missiles easily uh, as you know much I just spam them in the Sparrow. Look at that. We're not even smoking. That's crazy. The Sparrow literally got mega buffed in the latest update. Personally, I just don't see much of a reason to why you would ever want to purchase an Oppressor Mark II when you can get your hands on a Sparrow for literally one third of the price tag. Not only is the Sparrow faster flying at a top speed of 168, not only does it feature more flares, unlimited homing missiles, but now after the armor changes, honestly, it's just less and less reasons to why I want to use my Oppressor. I never thought ever that Rockstar would buff the Sparrow again, so these changes are absolutely huge. Now, obviously, the Oppressor is still pretty good. It flies fast, it's got missiles, and it is one of the better grinding tools in the game because of how maneuverable it is. But I'm gonna be real, the Sparrow's not that much less maneuverable. I mean, sure, it can't instantly turn, but you still are faster in the Sparrow by 38 miles per hour, and you do have the advantage of not having to respawn when you're getting low on missiles. Plus, you have flares that are way better. So honestly, I don't think you're going to see me using my Presser Mark II all too much anymore. Especially when I can call out my Sparrow and a personal vehicle at the same time, literally saving me so much time. I can literally have a Raiju and Sparrow out, which is just crazy when you think about it. So, as always, hopefully you enjoyed today's video, and if you'd like to see more content like this on other important buffs, changes, and information about the Bottom Dollars Bounty DLC in GTA, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye